Welcome to Around the Tech Episode 5, Connect and 3D. Microsoft has announced a special Halo Reach Xbox 360 bundle this week. For $399, one gets a new Xbox 360 with a 250GB hard drive and a silver finish, built-in 802.11 and Wi-Fi, two special edition wireless controllers, and a copy of Halo Reach. Moving on, Microsoft's Kinect has received official pricing. The standalone sensor with Kinect Adventures game will sell for $149 when it ships on November 4th. There will also be a 4GB console, replacing the old arcade model, bundled with the Kinect for $299. You can pre-order from several retailers now, including Amazon for a tax-free option. Links will be below. Apple rumors have been swirling around the web this week for Mac computers this time. Various sources are reporting limited quantities of both the iMac and Mac Pro lines. Although not confirmed via the online store, several individuals are reporting in-store reservations unavailable for Mac Pro lines in particular. HardMac goes on to suggest that these new machines will support USB 3.0 and FireWire 1600 and 3200 inputs, both of which would be firsts for Apple computers. In the spirit of social media, Samsung is converting iPhone complainers to Galaxy S supporters. The official Samsung UK mobile Twitter account has offered several users free Galaxy X smartphones in response to their iPhone 4 reception issues. I find this particularly interesting because Samsung is using social media not just to spread the word about their products, but also to criticize its competition in a friendly manner. For the cost of a few phones, Samsung's really taking advantage of the overblown antenna gate situation. HP's John Rubenstein, the former CEO of Palm, told Fortune magazine this week that WebOS 2.0 is expected to ship later this year. He went on to say HP is aggressively developing new hardware for WebOS. Hopefully we'll finally have a solid hardware offering along with this incarnation of WebOS. I'm expecting a device with better build quality and improved camera, more RAM and a faster CPU, better battery life and a larger QWERTY keyboard. I'd jump on that device, and I hope HP offers something along those lines. PC World is reporting that Panasonic will unveil the first 3D consumer camcorder next week, tentatively scheduled for a July 28th Tokyo News Conference. The camera is expected to be about the same size as the average consumer camcorder today, and is also expected to cost significantly less than Panasonic's Semi-Pro AG 3D A1 3D camcorder. That device costs about $21,000, in case you were wondering. For your question of the day, I'd like to hear your thoughts on 3D. Is 3D marketing hype and overrated, or will 3D content become the future? Personally, I think 3D needs to drop the glasses, like we see on the Nintendo 3DS, before we can even discuss its role in the household and its practicality. Now, I'm introducing a new segment to Around the Tech this week. I'm calling it Quick Links. If you think it should be called something else, leave it in the comments below. But essentially, Quick Links are a few stories that don't really need a lot of talking about, but just are some headlines that you should hear about. So for quick links for episode 5. The white iPhone 4 has once again been delayed. Apparently there are issues making a paint white enough for the designers and thick enough for production. Look for this phone later in 2010. Speaking of the iPhone 4, Apple's free case program began today. The process is really simple, and detailed instructions are posted in a previous video. Following AT&T, Verizon is expected to drop its unlimited data plan in favor of tiered data pricing. Although no specifics have been announced, it is believed Verizon will follow AT&T's lead with two plans, $15 for 200 megabytes a month and $25 for 2 gigabytes a month. And finally, for your deal of the day, I have something good for you. Dell has the Nokia E72 smartphone and car kit for only $220 shipped. This is an unlocked quad-band GSM smartphone that runs on AT&T's 3G network in the United States. Now, I've personally used the E72, and you can go back in some of my videos and check out what I thought of it, and I really enjoyed using it. If you're looking for a solid device at a great price and don't want to be tethered to a carrier, I would definitely jump on this deal. It's one of the more solid Nokia phones running Symbian that you can purchase at this point. So again, I'm Michael Sherlock from AroundTheTech.com. Thanks for watching Episode 5. Have a nice day.